So in this second part of looking at geometric sequences, we're actually going to use the formula that we discovered in the first video to solve a few problems. So in this first problem that we're going to look at, it says Janice and Gary were trying to determine the number of terms in a sequence. And it goes 32, 64, 128, etc. So what we can do is we can use our equation or our formula to help us determine the number of terms in this particular sequence. The last term, in this case 16,384, is always your t of n term. A, our first term, is 32. Our ratio, hmm, our ratio, let's see what we're doing here. Oh, we're multiplying by 2. How did I know that? I took the second term divided by the first term, told me the ratio was 2. So, if I look at this, the first thing I can do is divide each side by 32. So, if I take 16,384 divided by, whoops, I need to turn on my calculator, divided by 32, it tells me I have 512 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Now, at this point, we need to be able to figure out what 2 to what exponent is going to give me 512. We could guess and check here. We could try 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. But there's actually a uh, a bit of a simpler way to do it than to guess and check. Uh, what we need to see is we need to see that both of these could be written as the same base of 2 or we could graph it on our calculator and we can use our calculator to help us determine the solution. So if we take out our calculator what you have to do is you have to go into your y equals menu and the left side of your equation, the 512, is going to go in y1. And the 2 to the n minus 1 is going to go into y2. So that'll be 2 to the exponent of, but make sure when you're writing the exponent on your calculator, you put the x minus 1 in brackets, otherwise it's not going to give you the correct graph. Now, we've got y values here. We know y has to go as high as 512 because that's what this value is here. So if we go to our window settings and we go down to y max here, I'm going to make y max 600 so that it's at least as high as uh, the value that we have here. So we're going to hit graph and we're going to try and look at where do these two particular graphs intersect? Oh, they intersect way over on this right side. Now, we might not be quite far enough to the right here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change my window settings. I'm going to change my x minimum to 0 and I'm going to change my x maximum to 15. And I'm going to re-graph this to make sure that I can see the point of intersection here. And since we can see the point of intersection, to find that point of intersection, we go second function and we hit trace on our calculator and we choose number five for intersect. And we just keep hitting enter here until it tells us that our value of x is actually 10. So if we take that, we look over here, x is actually the value of n. So n in this is 10. That's telling us that there are 10 terms in this particular sequence. Now, that's how we use our calculator to find the solution. If we go back here, we could have converted um, 512 into a base of 2. If you take out your calculator and do a little guess and check, 2 to the 8th is 256, so 2 to the 9th is 512. So this is 2 to the 9th, and this is 2 to the n minus 1. Now since these bases are the same, we can remove the bases and we get 9 equals n minus 1 and if we add 1 to the other side, we get 10. Now this was not too hard to do because these numbers were pretty small. So it wasn't too difficult to figure this out as a base of 2. But if these numbers are really, really big, you might find that your method of using your graphing calculator is a little simpler to get to the solution. Okay. 
So now we're going to do a question with geometric means in it. So what it wants us to do, just like when we had arithmetic means, arithmetic means were the terms between the first and the last term. It's really the same for a geometric mean. It's the term between the first and the last term in your particular sequence. And that's explained up here. So our question says, between 81 and 1 over 729, insert four geometric means. So there's one, two, three, four geometric means. Well, to get from 81 to each one of these particular terms, we have to multiply by a common ratio. So you're going to notice that 81 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, r to the fifth, because r times r times r times r, five times is r to the fifth, is going to equal 1 over 729. Okay, well, what are we going to do? We're going to divide by 81. So if we take on our calculator, and we go 1 divided by 729, divided by 81, it's going to give us this really, really weird looking decimal. Remember, if you go to the, press the math key on your calculator and you choose the first item in that menu, which is fraction, you can convert this to a fraction. Hmm. In this case, uh, that doesn't work. So let's do it mathematically. 1 over 729 divided by 81 is the same as timesing by 1 over 81. So you're going to get 729 times 81 which is 5,949. Now how do we get rid of this exponent on 5 here? Well, what we do is we take the fifth root of this whole expression. So that means we take the fifth root of 1 and the fifth root of 59049. If you don't remember how to do the fifth root, you type a 5, you press math, you go all the way down to the fifth item in your menu, which is x root. And we want the x through the 59,049, and it's 9. So that tells us our ratio, common ratio, is 1 ninth in this case. So how are we going to find each of these four terms in this sequence? We're going to multiply by 1 ninth each time. So 81 times 1 ninth is the same thing as dividing by 9. That's going to give us 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 1 divided by 9 is 1 ninth. And this is going to be 181st and 1 over 729. So there's our sequence with our four geometric means in between it. Next question, of course, has variables in it. And this comes back to the previous video where I said it was really important you knew how to find the common ratio. In this particular question, it says we have three consecutive terms that are x plus 3, x, and x minus 5. And it says use the concept of common ratio to determine the value of x. Well, what do we know in this sequence? We know that the ratio is always the same. We know that term 2 divided by term 1 is going to be the same as term 3 divided by term 2. Or... If we take the terms in this particular sequence, the second term is x, the first term is x plus 3, the third term is x minus 5, and the second term is x. So when you have a fraction equal to a fraction, you have what's called a proportion. And to solve a proportion, we cross multiply. So x times x is going to give us x squared. Now we have to take x plus 3 times x whoops, minus 5. We're going to have to use FOIL. We're going to have to use dis distribution to expand this. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So now we need to try and solve for x. We need to try and move everything to one side of the equation. So I'm going to try and move everything to the left side of the equation. Well, if I subtract x squared from each side, that leaves us with nothing. That leaves us with 0. Negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x minus 15. If I then add 2x to the other side, I get 2x equals negative 15. 
And if I divide by 2, I get x to be negative 15 halves. This is actually a common ratio. Or sorry, no, it's not our common ratio. It's just our value of x. That's all it is. We use common ratios to find that. So now, now that we know x, we can actually find what each one of these three terms are. We can find out what x plus 3 is, what x is, and what x minus 5 is. Well, we know x is negative 15 halves. x plus 3, if you take negative 15 halves, you add 3, that's the same as 6 halves, you're going to get negative 11 halves. Here, you have negative 15 halves minus 5 halves, 5, which is minus 10 over 2, you're going to get negative 25 halves. So there are our three terms. A little bit more difficult, but you've got to remember that the only thing you know in a, ge in a geometric sequence to be constant all the way through the sequence is the ratio. So you've got to use ratios to set up that problem. The last question says the fourth term and seventh term are negative, one, are negative 54 and 1458. So it says term 4 is negative 54 and term 7 is 1458. It says use a system of equations to determine the first term and the common ratio. You're like, what? How am I going to do that? Well, we have to go back and we have to use our formula for a arithmetic se or geometric sequence. We know that negative 54 is a times r to the 4 minus 1, where negative 54 is a times r cubed. Because we don't know what a is and we don't know what r is, but we know that n is 4 in this case. And t is the seventh term, that means 1458 is a times r to the 7 minus 1, or 1458 is a r to the 6th. So I have some equations that look kind of similar. So what I'm going to do is write these equations underneath each other. And what we're going to do with these equations is we're going to divide these equations. So if we take 1458 and we divide it by negative 54, that's going to give us negative 27. If we take a divided by a, that just gives us 1. And r to the 6th divided by r cubed, remember when you're dividing and you have exponents, you're going to subtract those exponents. So you get negative 27 as r cubed. So how do we find r? Well, we're going to have to take the cube root of negative 27 to give us r. So we're going to take the cube root of negative 20, whoops, 27, and it's going to give us a common ratio of negative 3. So we found one of the things they want us to determine. They want us to determine the common ratio, but they also want us to determine a, which is the first term. So we're going to take one of our equations that we developed here, and we're going to substitute negative 3 in for r. So we get negative 54 equals a times negative 3 cubed. Well, if we calculate negative 3 cubed, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, that actually gives us negative 27. And if we then divide each side by negative 27, we figure out a is 2. So now that I know that a is 2, I could actually write out the sequence. The first term is 2, and I'm going to times by negative 3 each time. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Negative 18 times negative 3 is going to give me positive 54, and so on. I can write out the terms of the sequence. So there's some examples of how you can use the geometric sequence formula to solve some problems. Uh, we're going to get you to do an assignment, work on this. And remember, if you're having trouble, look back at these notes and see are there, are there notes or questions in these notes that are similar to the questions in your assignment. If there are, you can use these as a model to help you solve those questions and set them up.